There is a rupture here, but we can do rupture fire potion, which I very much like. I was desperately hoping to see an offering. It's, it's actually everything that we want. It is card draw and energy acceleration to get our powers in play quicker. That's grand, that's grand. Not a bad act one. I like how flexible this is. So in the early game here, we're definitely not going to go up this completely separate um, right side path. That's kind of interesting to see. That doesn't connect to the left at all, giving us the burning elite, but uh, only one low leaf fire along the way. And not much else of note, so I don't think this is a very high value path. <laughs> You're so welcome, Valor. That's one of my one of my favorite questions. So few people even notice that, that there's a, a difference here to begin with. Do I have a favorite card in Spire? It's hard to pick just one. Truly. There's so many so many ones that I really enjoy. Um One of my guilty pleasures, Spire wise, is Transmutation. The X cost colorless card. I think it's just a really, really cool effect, and it can be genuinely powerful at times. It's really good with Chemical X, kind of very random, so it's sometimes really powerful and sometimes completely useless, uh, just like some of uh, like White Noise and whatnot. And it's really hilarious if you play it with more than 10 energy. I think a card reward is completely fine here. Common Relic feels pretty good as well as a start. And I do have to admit to being, I think, a sucker for relics over cards, generally speaking. And there's a lot of good Common Relics um, you can get off the start. Choosing a card, very notably, dramatically improves your first three combats. By letting you have a, you know, a common going into that very first Fight. How many of you have started out a run of Slay the Spire and immediately on turn one take 12 damage to Jawworm? If you choose a card, you're less likely to have that happen. I do think I am going to take a common relic though. Let's see what we get. A potion belt. Two additional potion slots. That doesn't help us at all right now. Because we currently have no potions, and more empty potion slots doesn't do anything for us, but I'm sure we'll be happy with this um, as we get further and further into the run. And it could be a decent incentive to maybe buy a potion or two here in the early game, so maybe there's now a reason to dip into this store, perhaps. Let's see how our first two combats go. Excellent draw. Perfect. So, ideally, defend, defend, strike next turn. Yeah, we'll block here. And then three strikes next turn. Okay, so we only take two and we heal four. Or heal for six, so net gain of four hit points from the first combat. That's about as about the best Ironclad can do versus the Cultist, I think. So I'll call that ideal as far as floor one goes. And I'll call these card rewards pretty ideal, too. I, I can't think of many better early game cards for Ironclad than Cleave. It's a solid early damage option, and the upgrade is quite good, too. So we'll have a, a useful upgrade at the first fire if we take a Cleave. Could try to take a Dropkick. That's always a fun option. Personally, I, I tend to lean away from Dropkick as a, as a card as I don't trust its reliability a whole lot. But I think it could be a reasonable take here. Rage would be a little bit more speculative. It's a decent block addition, and does give the deck more output on average, since it's a zero cost card, but does not improve our ability to do damage right now, which is the most important thing at the beginning of the game, especially for a clad, I think. Let's grab a cleave here. Immediate cleave value? Oof. Ouch. Immediate pain. Uh, 
Not much I can do here, right? We can, I guess, bash the low health one so that it dies in one hit. Strike you, but that's... <laughs> that's about all we have. Didn't have enough damage to kill either of them. Take 15 to the face. We get 6 back, though, so it's only minus 9. Which is still pretty oof. Ooh, and we're offered Combust versus Spot Weakness versus Armaments. I think adding Strength here... Adding some more damage options is going to be good. The question is, do we take the guaranteed AoE? It's even good in the Hexaghost fight, I assure you. Um, or do we take the potential Strength gain that might whiff if the enemy is not attacking? It's a tough call. I think Combust has the greater utility in the Elites of Act 1, being very good against Sentries and providing value against Grumlin Nob without making Nob do more damage. It's also not bad against Lagavulin, although that hit point price you pay per turn does sting a little. Could enable us to do stuff like take a rupture, though. I think I I think I like this combust quite a bit. And my natural inclination now is to go to this store and buy just like two potions. So that we have them. And we can use those to prevent significant hit point loss incidents as we move through our acts. Maybe even then able to go like um, Elite Fire Elite instead of this path. If we buy some potions we can... Yes, yes, yes. And then we could go either or four Elites or something like this. Okay, let's do that. There is a rupture here. 76 plus 54 is 130, so I can buy Fire Potion and Rupture. That's kind of cool. Can't do Rupture in a card remove, that's more money than we have, but we can do Rupture Fire Potion, which I very much like. And we're still in the easy pool of combats, right? Potions are for the weak. Well, that's me right now. I could also see something like Headbutt plus Card Remove being uh, a spicy choice. I go with my first instinct here. Although not my good instinct. Far so good. With that draw, let's not play the bash. Bash strike does 17. I don't think I need to play this combust. Yeah, we're good. Saved one hit point. We get a smoke bomb. Alright, well, I guess I'll take the Strength Scaling card, since we're going to be scaling Strength. That does wound me to uh, to skip a combat like that. Although I guess it healed me, technically. How strange. I mean, at least we got six hit points there. Uh, we do now need to make up for that by beating two elites. So let's begin. Good. That's what I like to see. What did we flee from? We fled from three lice that were attacking for like 22 on turn one with zero block in hand. <laughs> And no ability to kill any of them, so it was just like 20 damage <laughs> from lice. OWM, what kind of tree grows in the spire? A sen tree. No refunds. Okay. 
Okay, feels like a reasonable fire potion. What if the answer is take 10 to keep the fire potion, though? What's then? Ascend tree! Ten hit points for fire pot. Fire pot's probably worth more than 10 hit points against Gremlinob, right? I'm actually gonna choose to keep it here. Would I buy your fire potion for 10 hit points? I would... I would buy three fire potions for 30 hit points right now. Not even kidding. <laughs> Sounds excellent. Yes. You get three more days, though. It's a little spooky. Yes. Wow. That worked out really well. Get ourselves an oddly smooth stone, giving us a point of dex, making the block cards block for a bit more. No, that's that's a sneaky, dirty trap. Limit break is right now. Absolutely not. Double our strength. The only way we get strength is by rupture, so we have to play in order. Combust. Rupture. Limit break. That is going to be so unreliable. That there is no way it's going to happen consistently. We should take the zero cost damage in anger here. It'll work well with the strength we're generating. I think our first upgrade is genuinely rupture? Question mark? At least for elite fights, it's going to be pretty consistent. Bash is a reasonable upgrade too for the third Vuln turn. The Combust Upgrade is also very good at uh, 5 goes to 7 damage. I do want to upgrade Combust and Rupture and Bash. I mean, I want to upgrade literally all of these cards, <laughs> basically, but we don't get to upgrade them all. We have to make some choices. I think Cleave is going to get left behind. I think Anger is going to get left behind. But we can probably do these four. Depends on how much health we lose or gain from this Elite Fight. And we may get uh, either a Rest or another Upgrade or nothing. Yeah, so I would agree. If had we had we not just fought sentries, the combust upgrade would be a lot more attractive. But because we're 50-50 to fight Lega or Nob, I like the rupture upgrade in particular. Um, it's gonna crush Legavulin, especially. The bash upgrade would be better against Nob, probably. Or maybe even Sword Boomerang. But rupture's reasonable too, especially with the draw potion, to ensure that we get it in play early. Let's take that. It is, in fact, Legavulin, so I'm extremely thrilled with the Rupture upgrade, and we get to play the Bash here. Though I might not actually start the combat. At least try. So I could do a reasonable chunk of damage. We're not exactly getting the best block draw. I think I'll take the two points of strength here. And then we wake up on this turn. Yeah. It's not a not a turn I would have liked to be attacked for 20. Feel the need to use a potion here. Might even get the kill next turn. 12, 12, 12. Or 14 plus 18. Okay, so fire potion kills. Which means this fire potion now saves us 15 health. I paid 10 health for it. We cha cha exchange it for 15 and I'm up 5 by not using it on the sentries. That feels pretty good to me. Oh my goodness, we get a red skill? Okay, so that's one of the things we could have found that means we're going to go the four elite route now. 
because we are just below half HP. We start with three points of strength, and it's Smarkin time. I really like a True Grit. This blocks for eight. Sure, it's going to exhaust a random card, but whatever. We'll upgrade it or something, maybe. Limit Break would have been would have been pretty good, I will admit. Limit Break would have been pretty good. But will the Burning Blood betray us? Not if we are very careful. I'm going to grab this meal ticket for later. Sustain sounds grand. Yeah, we're going this way. Better believe it. Yeah, not if we keep taking damage is the other answer. <laughs> Help! Okay, a potion's great. More strength gain, or would we rather have a Hemo or Carnage? Actually, wait, Hemokinesis! Yo! Hemokinesis activates a rupture in addition to being very efficient um, damage to enemies. Hemokinesis sounds grand, especially with the, the buff to this card. Previously, the unupgraded version was lose 3, deal 14. Now it is uh, 2 for 15 and upgrades to 20. Sweet. You're going to absolutely stomp. These poor elites. I'll tell you right now, this is going to be a good Essence of Steel. below half, cutting for the Burning Blood. I'm wondering if I can get away with not playing the Combust. The answer is I shouldn't try. I am going to skip Rupture here. Because this fight's going to be very short anyway. to go with our potion belt. That's such exciting news, Twitch chat. Always potions. Forever. And a second copy of Rupture. Hmm. Part of the problem with our current strategy is that if Rupture is on the bottom of the deck, we can't gain any strength. Adding a second Rupture gives us redundancy as well as a greater payoff once the stuff is in play. Hmm. Don't think I want this Berserk. Even though we could maybe even upgrade it. Second Rupture is really aggressive scaling. <laughs> if we take a second Rupture and then find the Rod, we might have to skip Tungsten Rod if we were to find it because of Combust here. It'd be better to just stick with one. Keep the deck smaller. Is a little concerning in Act 2, right? To have two ruptures, but it's way more concerning to like fight Book of Stabbing and have Rupture Plus be on the bottom. I am going to take the second Rupture. Let's see how quickly I come to regret this. I guess I could have just actually killed you. You want to take some damage here. Look this way, Ben. So, half HP is... how much? Uh, 75 divided by 2. It's 37.5, so we need to be at 37. Okay, we're good. 
perfect, actually. Ooh, Flambe. 13 block. Sign me up. Hits hard against Hexagos, too. Headbutt could be interesting, but I'm, I'm gonna take a Flambe, thank you. I will be using this Liquid Bronze against Hexaghost. I think it's just generally a good idea to do that. I've underestimated this boss many times, and I've died many times because of it. Wait a minute. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> I was a little worried. This is exactly what the Swift Potion was for. It gets for a bad draw against Knob Turn 1. Here we go. Yes, yes. Rourke. Looks like we skip the rupture, just go bash Hemokinesis, and that definitely gets a victory. Maybe there was even a world where I did math to determine that I was allowed to play Strike instead of Hemokinesis and save the two hit points. Happy to see at least an early Ceramic Fish, giving us nine gold if we add a card to the deck. I don't think I want any of these. So I'll slow down the draw a bit. We would love a Warcry plus but not a regular one. I think we take a combat over a question mark. A combat is an opportunity to get just get another potion into the potion belt. They really would appreciate. Whereas an event could be anything. It could even be nothing. Our ideal health going to Hexa is probably 35, as that's just below half and just below a threshold, but I'm not going to feel too pressured to get exactly there. Hmm. If I combust Flame Barrier, I take exactly 6? Probably win next turn. That's probably the best idea. That'll kill all the gray slimes. Be a little bit below ideal health, but that's a fine place to be. Immense the toastening. Get him. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why combust is the good stuff. Feel no pain is offered. I don't feel like we have enough exhaust to take a feel no. Well, they just want the feel no pain, yeah? A bit worried that's too many powers. Makes True Grit block for more, makes Ascender's Bane block for a bit, makes various statuses block. Almost Strike right seems the more sensible pick. Will we have True Grit Plus for Hexaghost? I don't think so. I think we're going to be upgrading Bash or maybe Sword Boomerang. Yeah, that's a real answer. I'll probably regret not taking the Feel No Pain later, as it will invariably combo with any block strategy that we try to employ. It does make us a little slow in the short term, but I think we could afford to be a little slow in the short term. I'll grab that. That way I can, like, take a Corruption or something. And I think Bash is going to be the upgrade. Make that full and worth it. Since we have not seen a Shockwave or anything. Smell that stinky defend later. Okay. That's, uh, that's certainly a hand. Hello. <laughs> Almost want to let this burn hit me. 
I'm not going to. I'd like to not be forced to use the blood potion. Let's see. It seems very likely that I will be. Based on this draw. out. Didn't have to use our blood potion. Get a duplication potion, which can cause the card to be played two times, and I was desperately hoping to see an offering. It's it's actually everything that we want. It is card draw and energy acceleration to get our powers in play quicker, but it's also a self-damage card, so it will activate the ruptures to give us strength, and it gives block with the feel no pain. It's good before the powers are in play, and it's good after the powers are in play. That's grand. That's grand. Other option is add even more powers to the deck. I think that would be a bad idea. Not so good. Yes, Frogan. Generally speaking, uh, saving resources over health going into your next act is more helpful. You heal based on the missing health that you have when going into the next act. Specifically, you heal for 75% of your missing health. What that means ultimately is that any hit points you save during the current act are only worth one-fourth of their current value going into the next act. A regen potion heals for 15 normally, so you'd only get to keep three or four of that going into the next act, essentially. Which means that if you drink the regen potion after the act transition, you should be up 11 hit points compared to drinking it before. Hmm. Oh wait, we actually get the corn chip? Oh my god. That's another reason not to drink the potion, by the way, is because uh, you might be offered Sacred Bark to double the strength of your potions. I didn't even process that Sacred Bark was here for a second. I was looking at the Runic Cube and trying to think. Uh, Runic Cube draws us a card whenever we take damage, which in a rupture, double rupture build is something you really want to see. Unfortunately, it does not work the way you'd want it to with Combust. Combust with Runic Cube causes you to draw a card at the end of your turn and immediately discard it, which can potentially be disastrous, especially with an ethereal card like an Apparition. You'll draw the Apparition and it immediately exhausts. So that's a thing. Which realistically means we get plus one draw on Offering and one card draw when we play Hemokinesis and that's it. Sacred Bark, or sorry, Coffee Dripper is here for more energy, giving us an energy every turn, but we can no longer rest, and this deck is doing self-damage things. Which is a little scary. Meanwhile, we have an immense amount of just raw hit points represented by the Sacred Bark right now. Blood Potion becomes 40% of our max hit points instead of 10%, uh, 20%, and the Regen Potion becomes 10 regen, which is more than twice as much healing as a regular regen potion. We're also getting one potion per combat. I, I really like this Sacred Bark to go with our White Beast Statue Potion Belt that we already have. We're only Toyornithopter away from the full potion combo, right? Let's take it. With all this money, I think an early store is a good idea. Looks like we can definitely fix our upgrade deficit if we want to here. Or we can do some amount of elite fighting. I think that's going to depend on what we see at the store. With White Beast Statue... Oh, we'll also get a 15 hit point heal at the shop thanks to meal tickets, so more reason to go to the store. I think, generally speaking, we're going to prefer to take combats right now. Combats are great value because we're, you know, we're getting potions. And because of Ceramic Fish. And... yeah. Okay. 
Okay, this is going to be a long-ish fight, and we're going to take a lot of damage. I think I'm just going to preemptively use the regen potion right now. Yeah. Just going to go ahead and do that. I've got a feeling. Timo to try to leave this fight more quickly. Hmm. Does give me two strength currently. Yeah. And then the avocado heals from us. <laughs> Just back and forth. Everybody heals off everybody. So probably a kill next turn. We can stall next turn. Won't be frail anymore. Apparently we are healing more than we're taking damage from the, uh, the thingy. But looks like it's time to leave now. We got most of the regeneration. Oh, I should have mapped. That's all right. Got most of the regen from that potion. I'm... I'm pretty happy with that. Right. I'll add a Dark Embrace, because I'm a sucker for Dark Embrace. That's just the way it is. Though it doesn't necessarily help me that much right now. Give me your gold. This is definitely a fight where being a little bit slow is quite painful. But with Red Skull here, we're no longer slow. Don't you see? Blocking next turn. Let's just go rupture strike triggers. I don't think we can take a flex plus. <laughs> I do like another True Grit, now that we have uh, Dark Embrace. These unupgraded True Grits are going to be a little difficult to use, but we'll figure it out. Alright, what potion am I going to seek to use in this combat? Probably the Blood Potion at the end of it. Home Potion could be reasonable, too. Probably going to want that Fear Potion for the upcoming Elite, though. How's it going? I use forks for soup. What a name, what a player. Okay, we'll definitely play the bash. Does mean taking a little bit of damage. All enemies start with barricade? It feels like it wouldn't matter that often. Right? Prize in Donu and Deca. Okay, this could be a reasonable upgrade turn. I need a bit more of an oomph here. Well, I'm definitely glad I didn't take the, uh, Toffee Dripper. Put it that way. Don't think I can take a third unupgraded True Grit. The Blood for Blood seems hilarious, though. 
Again, unupgraded, though. Really need parts that are not unupgraded. Alright, heal me! Back to just below half. Membership card is grand, giving us a 50% discount on all products, and yes, that is a toy ornithopter! Now healing us for five every time we use a potion. Heck yes. Second win sounds like a great way to make these powers do something for me. In some fights. We can get a card removal and I sus... Hmm. What about discovery, actually? Do some math. 39 plus 53 plus 38. 130. Yes, we can afford to second wind discovery and card remove. Because of Ceramic Fish, which is now a really good relic thanks to the membership card. So yes, let's grab both of these Exhaust Synergy cards, and then remove one useless Stinky card. There's gotta be Strike. <laughs> oh hey, I have just the potion for you! You stinky plant. I guess I will... Hmm. I'll put the Feel No Pain in play. I guessed wrong! Offering to do that. All right, we're good. Exhaust and draw. All right, I think we're getting somewhere. I feel like I'm going to be going headlong into an elite fight immediately, though, yeah? Maybe... maybe an upgrade first? Of some kind, getting the Dark Embrace upgraded, because it's an energy upgrade, or... something. We need to spark some life here. With this Blood Potion on the Toy Ornithopter, I mean, we, we have 20 hit points plus 40% of our mech. HP represented in this potion belt, so we're we're fine on hit points right now. Combust could be helpful for the slavers as an upgrade, so could cleave. B. I like the offering upgrade just for mass card draw. Really would be nice to be able to play Dark Embrace, huh? What's the plan? Do I go three upgrades? Like this elite? That's certainly an option. Or do I go like, fight this elite and then into the store? Going to another store I think is a good idea. We can remove another card, we'll get a 15 hit point heal. And with our membership card, we'll be able to afford stuff there, as long as we fight one elite. So I think upgrade, fight an elite is the play here. Tough choice. 
Yeah, there's a lot of rest sites intermingled and everything. Wonder what this event will be. Maybe it was fight the elite first and then. No, surely not. Foolish. Alright, I'm gonna upgrade this Dark Embrace, because I don't feel like I'm gonna get it upgraded otherwise. It was a combat the whole time. I see. Very well. We need to die next turn, I think, right? Oh! Hype. Rupture? Question mark? Odds that I kill next turn are very low, so maybe it has to be Feel No Pain, actually. Yeah. A block with Colorless Potion, maybe. Depending on what we draw, but this looks good. Alright, Discovery, this is your first chance to prove yourself. I like you. You did a good job. Plus three strength and three block, or like a ton of block. Instead of he having a ton of block anyway. Play the offering. And I can probably drink the blood push at the end. Rude. This is the one card I actually didn't want to exhaust there. I took one damage because of that. Rude. This is heal for. Put me above um, above Red Skull, right? Yeah, it's got to. Because forty percent is basically most of fifty percent plus five. Yeah, I'd have to be at. It would. It would. This will put me above Red Skull value unless I have one hit point. That almost makes me want to use one of the other potions. Unless... Actually, no. Hold on. Different idea. Ooh, more card draw. More card draw! Okay, it is the Slavers. So far we are down some strength compared to what we'd be at otherwise. But it looks like I'm about to get that back. Let's see what Discovery can create for me today. Three Flame Barriers, pretty hype. Heavy Blade would have been spicy. If we had Red Skull active, this would have killed the back Slaver. So, noted to self, my strategies have had consequences. That's okay. So I'm going to take... 18 here.
Puts me at 34. That's good. Okay. Uh, but I'll go to 39 if I use the Fear Pot, right? Fluffy Mittens, thank you so much for the Tier 2 sub and those very generous 16 months of dollary dues. And love. So I could play Rupture Combust here. I think what I'm just going to do is Dark Embrace second win, though. Try to draw towards our offering. Shimo would kill. We take a almost fatal amount of damage from that, though. I'm thinking something like uh, Duplication Potion Cleave. Though that actually won't do that much damage now that we're weakened. Tricky Tricky. So I I kind of need to gamble all of these if I want to have a reasonable chance of drawing the offering. Only six cards in hand. It's eight in the draw pile. And I'm not exactly thrilled if I have to battle trance into the offering, right? I think I'm going to gamble all of these. We'll see where we end up. Yeah, we could have colored this potion first, and perhaps we should have, because we did whiff on the uh, the offering there. So that's a bit awkward. But I think we just read the battle trance and then play the offering. Sad as it is to say. And hopefully that kills the back one, right? What if I... Hmm. Double Flame Barrier is an interesting idea. Really want to kill the Red Slaver. Alright, I'm gonna... I am gonna Battle Trance here. That's a good pull. So currently only six. Offering puts us below half, but not if... Not if I use a potion, right? That put us to 44, minus 6 is 38. What I can do is dupe pot the offering. And then some other card, right? We get two cards duped with duplication potion. I think this is the other one. Is a little questionable. We're still vulnerable. 
Oh god. Well. 37 is below half. Probably time for another potion then. Your potion doesn't do a lot for us. So I think now let's cut this potion. Perfect. Panic entrance enough. Six, no. Violence could be, though. I'll try to get two of them. Did forget that. Looks like we're good. Flood my deck with cards, will you? Well, I'll just make more cards. Let's see how you like that. Now we get to draw extra cards on turn one. We're offered a Reaper, but honestly, I don't know about that. That seems like one too many win more cards. That worked out ultimately not too bad. We did spend one more potion than I would have liked, but it was Slavers, so whatever. Reaper is amazing sustain if we, you know, once we're already set up, once every card has been played, Reaper becomes a good card. Maybe that is something we want so that we can just take heinous amounts of damage and then heal it all back. Alright. Oh, speaking of healing. Panagraph heals us 25 of the sort of boss fights. I will take that, because we're in some kind of need for sustain. And let's get the other rupture upgraded, now that we have a deep desire for tons of strength. Alright, enough money to buy a relic here. Also another heal. We're offered Frozen Eye, which I think is genuinely pretty good in a situation like this. Allowing us to see the draw pile in order, letting us know exactly what we're going to draw into. Actually, yeah, that sounds really good. And we can buy a disarm to go with. This is great heart insurance. Good book of stabbing insurance, too. Combos with our dark embrace and our feel no pain. Now I hear you thinking, wait a second, Baylor. 19 plus 85 is more than 99, but to that I say Ceramic Fish will give us 9 gold back. And we can, in fact, buy both the Disarm and the Frozen Eye. Not exactly good potions here, although we're fighting... No, we're not fighting Collector. Okay, if I were fighting Collector, I might buy this Ancient Potion. Is an immediate book of stabbing. Let's see next up Reaper, Battle Trance, Burning Pact, and some other stuff. How do we want to open this combat? It's our plan, man. We're gonna need to gain some strength. That's the plan. I gamble everything except feel no pain. What does my turn look like? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Battle Trance. Play Feel No Pain. Play Rupture. Play Second Wind. We draw just up to Dark Embrace. Then we go Dark Embrace. Disarm with a Cinder's Bane. That actually sounds pretty good. 
Thank you for his and I. So yes, discard six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Draw one, two, three. me combust. And then next turn I draw the offering, okay. But do I actually play combust? That is the question. Or I'm taking three, six more? Let's not play the combust. And Tramare, or sorry, Targaryen Tantrum. Did you hear about the Ironclad that was ranting about the end of the world? He said everybody was going to be taken by the Rupture. Strength, angry mode. Pretty decent heal. Let me kill next turn reasonably. Yeah. Because at most I can only draw four. I actually want to draw that hand next turn to kill. Love this frozen eye. This does kill, right? Okay, yeah, that was kind of close, though. It's here! Yes! We have energy now. Mummified hand with our one, two, three, four, five powers. Oh my goodness. And another blood potion. And we have corruption, dark embrace, feel no pain. Mummified hand. Bag of prep. Frozen eye. Let's go. And then we draw hands like this, because our deck is too big. Oh dear. Yeah, our next in our next hand is three more strikes. Oh no. Oh no. Well, the good news is Reaper is on the bottom, question mark? Hmm. I see. This could hurt quite a bit. Okay, that's somewhat merciful. Trying to figure out if I should play this battle trance or not. I guess what I'll do is um, play Rupture and... S yeah, if, if we hit it, I'll play it. Perfect. That was the perfect outcome. Sweet.
Let's hit draw first. So block this turn anyway. Yeah, this way. Feel no pain makes the Reaper free. We'll just take that. Question mark. There's Bash. Sentinel's going to be pretty reasonable with with everything. A card that gives us bonus energy if we exhaust it. Hey there, Prankster. Would I take Runic Pyramid in this deck? Definitely. Definitely. Being able to retain Reaper, being able to retain um, the Second Wind or the Corruption can all be very, very valuable to me. Yeah, a deck really needs an Apotheosis bottled. And a Bottled Corruption. That's that's what would really take us into Silly Land. Bottled Corruption plus Bottled Apotheosis. Alright, with Double Ruptures in my opening hand, I'll take this Hemokinesis, actually. That's four strength. play that. This just gives me four more strength. Means Reaper heals for eight more. This. This may be worth a potion. Darker Brace. So good, man. Card draw. Yes, I'll take card draw. Pummel Strike plus draws more than one card, and therefore it is card draw. Going to go ahead and upgrade the Corruption. Uh, it's relatively difficult to make the Mummy Hand actually hit the Corruption, so we need to be able to afford it in the first place. opening hands, and we get Feel No Pain on the draw, too. Corruption is pretty far down, but with Dark Embrace in the opening hand, it, it's not going to feel like it's that far down. Alright, I'm going to Battle Trance and we'll just see how many of these powers we end up getting in play. Dark Embrace, yes. Yes. I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, we just play literally every card. I understand. Well, that's pretty good. You can say. Alright, four strength per turn. Alright, Discovery, what do you got? A bloodletting? I'm in. Give me four strength. We're stealing the rare cards from the draw pile. Which means one of them is going to take Corruption, the other is going to take Offering. I have no idea which one's which, so we just got to hit them both. Maximum power achieved. Let the destroy inning resume. 
Let's do it this order. This deck is so strong. I want to win this turn. So we have basically all the other pieces of the ridiculous combo. I think it's time to add the barricade now. I like barricade in particular with dark embrace plus corruption because with those with those two powers in play, you can play pretty much every block card in your deck on the same turn. And that means you would like to be able to retain that block for more turns. Take that. And with Barricade, Speed Potion feels pretty good. We'll keep that over the uh, Ear Potion, I guess. Alright, there's the Runic Pyramid. If we wanted it. Three extremely good options. Actually. Option one. Black Star makes elites drop more relics. Option two. Cursed Key gives us more energy per turn, but we do have to take at least one curse when we open the mid-act chest. Or option three. The Runic Pyramid allowing us to retain our hand from turn to turn. I love Runic Pyramid with Bag of Prep. I think Pyramid is going to do a pretty good job here. Although I wonder if we'll get clogged with strikes sometimes. That's right, we are first to go to the Burning Elite because we have none of our keys yet, so... That really disincentivizes the Black Star. All the more reason, I think, to take a Runic Pyramid. We'll be somewhat limited on energy, but trust me when I say that Corruption ain't gonna care about how much base energy per turn we have. to go here. It's actually a pretty good path. Good. Okay, we didn't get uh, hosed too badly by delaying our Burning Elite. Darklings is definitely going to be a good test of our deck's abilities. Can we... Can we survive here? I think with Double Rupture Combust on turn one, we're just going to be completely fine. Easy. Just don't exhaust your feel no pain, forehead. And sure, we might take a lot of damage at the start of certain combats. That's just part of the charm. Or something. Stronger. Easy. Infernal Blade Plus is kind of tempting as a uh, zero cost attack that also activates our exhaust synergies. I 
Hey, Mizuza, the streak does indeed continue. And Ironclad is looking, well, promising. Promising is how I'll describe him. Grab that. Her potions. 188 gold with membership card. Much too much to lose to the Tomb of Lord Red Mask, unfortunately. Let's just discover. Oh. I understand. Neither of the ruptures made it into play here. So I'll just like take what I can get from the Reaper. Which is full heal, so good. Trendy Kendi, thank you so much for the 18 months of support. Who Pummel Plus. Yeah. Also love the Distilled Chaos. Plays the top six cards of the draw pile, and we know exactly which six cards. Thanks to Frozen Eye. Pretty spicy. And I really don't want to be made vulnerable here. Can you not do that? I asked for that. Yeah, I asked for that. Alright, well, this fight's gonna be stinky anyway, so let's just play the top six, shall we? the Reaper. That is truly sad. Oh wait, I can exhume it? <laughs> well then, never mind. Alright, return the Reaper. Good stuff. <laughs> God, I love that. Just around the corner. Okay, that sounds better. wanted to play Barricade. part. I'm okay with not exhibiting Reaper as long as I get in the fight soon. Cool. 
another disarm or a ghostly armor plus. Havoc plus is actually... Wait, Havoc plus with Frozen Eye? Hold the hacking phone. This just plays the top card of the deck for free, whatever it is. We can know when it's corruption or barricade. We can know when it's something that, like, bash. Wow. Wow. Yes, actually. Such exciting news. Command add a quote to the quote database, exclamation point, quote, add, and then stuff. Whatever, whatever I said. The words. Use the words, Anakin. Corruption, Dark Embrace. Okay, so we're already doing... We're already doing the thing. Do everything on one turn. Good stuff. You have a corruption. You can never have too many shrug it offs. Not holding any phones at all. Yeah, well, that's why I told somebody else to hold it for me. I can't hold the phone all the time. Let's grab a shrug. Super Soul Plus is kind of interesting, too. By the way, the Swift Potion is draw six cards. Skill Potion... Actually, but you know what? With Corruption, I'm gonna take the Skill Potion here. Two copies of a skill could be two Limit Breaks. Just as a hypothetical example. Alright, who's our Burning Elite? It is... Strength Giant Head. Not exactly the nastiest combo in the world. Dang it, let me hand. You are the chosen one. There we go. Looks like I'm not going to need offering today. Or combust? I feel like I need one of those things, surely. Okay, so I'll play the combust. What will True Grit hit? <laughs> I think I'm just gonna True Grit, uh, second win the True Grit, rather. That sounds more viable here.
less pain than before. damage. So the, the slow stacking causing more and more damage each turn. Oh, you're still counting? Oh. I stopped a while ago, dude. Right. Well, Mori is probably not going to block anything with our current pa Well, actually, hold on. Maybe. Yes to a shockwave. Shockwave combos with our corruption, with our feel no pain, applies very valuable debuffs to myself. Dex pot's better than speed pot. Actually, no, the speed pot's better because I can play all the block cards on the same turn with barricade, <laughs> and maybe I can keep the uh, the decks too. Upgrades that feel good. Go for more energy. Maybe targeting these true grits is actually kind of like really important now. Let's do that. Blue key over the Orichalcum. Orichalcum's not terrible here, but definitely not uh, invaluable or anything. And I think I'm going to go two elites, two question marks. It's reasonable to go to an additional store here. We'd be able to remove two strikes, which is actually kind of insane, right? Maybe I should take the additional store with this much cash. All right. A minute to win it. Turn this strike in two. and Sever Soul, for some reason. A flex. Alright, I'll take it. Aha. Artifact. Good morning, Nerf Nitro. Okay, very important things. One, remove a strike. I think a second Feel No Pain is very good. A uh, Clockwork Souvenir is definitely very good, giving us one artifact on turn one. That works with the Flex Potion or the Speed Potion. There's another Feel No Pain here, which I quite like. And if I take another Feel No Pain, what about a Purity? Letting us exhaust any number of cards in hand, potentially for block. Although the more cards we add, the more likely it is that Dark Embrace is towards the bottom of the deck. I'm not going to add an Art of War to this. Dark Embrace Corruption very quickly here. Grit. Just it. Okay. Actually, wait, what's the play? Draw one, Havoc draws another. I think I need to skill potion here. Perfect. I think wind is also quite good here. Yeah, Havoc can play Reaper, but I, I don't really want to do that right now. Got business plans. I 
Yeah, let's just get the... the draw. Maybe should have flexed. I'm cool with this. Okay, and then the goal is to play barricade this turn. Doesn't seem like it should be too hard. Yeah, play the brigade, aka the entire deck. That's right. That's the goal. You make deck free. Okay. Barricade played. Entire deck played. another wound or two. card. Take it anyway. French doubles are blunk. Oh, Dark Embrace and Barricade both really far down. How is that going to treat us in this fight, then? I remember if this uh, blocks Trailer Vuln. Oh, I've got an Ancient Potion for even more blocking. Good. It is the the weak, rather, that gets blocked. Foolish. Yeah, we get corruption pretty early, at least. Part of my hand is now free. Get a Stark Embrace in hand. And from there, the world. Deck really wants a... Body Slam now.
Oh, that was every card I have. <laughs> I see. Well, then I will become angry clad. You will know true pain. Angry. Does angry clad add another flex potion to just, like, destroy the elites? I think so. Blood potion, though? Hold on. The Frozen Iron Pyramid and Corruption is deep breath good here. I think so, yeah. It would let me reshuffle the draw pile if I saw that Dark Embrace was on the bottom or something. Especially given how large the draw pile is. Uh, yeah. Bonus Merchant with... Oh! Back up, Dark Embrace. Well, that'll solve my problems pretty well. Just have two. Second offering, also extremely useful. Toolbox is here, so you let us draw a colorless card on turn one. Or just a straight-up secret technique to fetch any skill from the draw pile. afford that, but I can't afford the toolbox. We can also go for just one removal. I won't be able to afford two. Definitely removing strikes helps this deck a lot. But heck, I love toolbox. Get in there, toolbox. Okay, Awaken One's gonna be an interesting fight with so many powers in the deck. Oh, I could afford it if I can get all three. You bet. Okay, so this turn one is not a problem, right? Oh, that's interesting. I think I'll be fine though, because Barricade's here. And I have a Disarm. I'm not going to play this Corruption, probably. At least not initially. Barricade first might have actually been the right upgrade there. My hope is that we can still sometimes play the Barricade for free, but it's definitely not a guarantee of any kind. Realistically, I need to either play this Corruption... Ooh. 
Or I need to, like, dex potion. Dex potion would solve most of my woes for the short term. This is going to be by far the hardest fight for a while. I think I am going to use one of my potions here. Let's use this one. That should make life nice and easy. Yes. And then I won't need to just play the barricade. Okay. So there, we got the barricade down for free, thankfully. You have. Headbutt. Headbutt for now. Don't I need this combust? I feel like I need this combust. Okay, Dark Embrace is in play. Next turn, you kind of gotta die. Tolerate this. I'm only going to play one of these Dark Embraces. Basically all of our block for the rest of the fight, though.
Angry Cloud. Angry Clad gets enough money to remove a card. That's a shot. GG. Okay, that cost us some health and one of our very, very, very valuable potions, but I think was necessary to deal with the incredible threat that is the Awakened One with a uh, relatively subpar draw order, too. Next up, Time Eater shouldn't be a problem, especially not with a Dark Shackles in my hand. Barricade and Dark Embrace relatively early, and Entrench at the bottom. Alright, well, if you insist. Every time we play 12 cards, Time Eater does forcibly end our turn, so that is something to be mindful of. Don't both dark embraces. Um, how far do I go here? More feeling, no pain. Ping. Yes. Good. card? Whoops. Not, a deal. Not, that, not that we're going to be at any risk here, right? Foolish. GG. To thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all of these absurd powers? You ready your stick? Bonk the heart. For a big load of damage. Got full HP going into the act, which means we can up. Create a card here. We will get that barricade upgraded for the energy discount. I think that's probably our best option. Since we're so low on energy normally. Primstone is here. Okay. Well, Gambler's Brew is insanely good. This has got to be better than a card remove. 
letting us discard any number of cards and draw that many. If the gamblers or if the Dark Embrace is on the bottom of the deck, this more than anything else can save us, drawing a full ten cards with Runic Pyramid. That's got to be the best. All right, I think we're in excellent shape for these final two combats here. Let's see. Ooh, Dark Embraces are pretty far down. 20 plus cards to see Dark Embrace here. That might not stop me though. I get both Feel No Pains and Corruption early on, plus second win for the burns. I think we'll be fine. Um, the opening draw is uh, up through Feel No Pain. We'll go Feel No Pain, Burning Pact, Cleave or some such into Corruption. Hopefully get to... Yeah. This will take the zero cost exhaust. Actually, wait. Power? Let's take the power. I can also Burning Pack Sentinel, and then I always have power to play. Energy to play Corruption. It's gotta be worth it. A little bit. We do heal from Pantograph. I'd like to keep the Sadistic Nature as a second wind fodder maybe next turn. And then next turn we have Offering. Barricade in play. Ruptures are not in play yet? No, they are not. Played Bash first, that's alright. Are they taking two? I can play Sword Boomerang when I don't know it's gonna hit the right target. Is good. This one anger is really popping off as we uh, exhaust the deck down. I'm really glad we took it in Act 1. Sweet. Bag of Marbles is uh, vulnerable on turn 1. I don't think that'll matter much. We want a second, second wind. Maybe? I think the purity has us covered. It'd be great. Do I want a skill potion over any of these potions? I don't think so. I think 10 strength is going to be glorious right off the bat here. 
Got a third wind! Hell yeah, Dark Shackles, although Discovery's not bad either. This is guaranteed. Don't take damage from a multi-attack. Dark Embrace, Barricade, Entrench, Feel No Pain on turn one, Corruption just below. That's gonna be a good game, I think. Ooh. So, correct order here is... No Pain, then Dark Embrace, Barricade. Now do these, to heal back up. Anything else I want to destroy? I'll get rid of Strike Strike Boom next turn with it. Oh, got one in hand? Okay. Not that. That would be a good turn to play our Entrench. I'm gonna try to havoc that uh, feel no pain. Byronium. Don't want to play disarm now. The heart's about to remove strength down. That's all the block we get. I think that's all we're gonna need. Yeah, we have 26 strength now, so. GG. Mr. Hart. GG, everybody, what a wild run. 
Hey, hey everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. Ta-ta for now.